left all this water lying around? Was it you, meteorites? Whoa, whoa, it's cool. I know meteorites. They wouldn't do something like that. All right, meteorites. We're cool here. Hey, everyone. Julia. And Julianne. Here for G News. I don't know if you noticed, but the Earth's got quite a bit of water on it. We're talking literal boatloads. We're talking over 326 gallons times a million times another trillion. And the obvious question is, how did it get here? And the obvious answer is, it's been here since right when the Earth formed. Except based on how we think the Earth formed, it would have just been too hot around this part of the solar system. It would have boiled off into space. So for a while, the conventional thinking has been Earth's water was delivered by meteorites. It's like a courier on a cosmic level. The idea is, soon after the Earth took shape, meteorites called carbonaceous chondrites came hurtling in from the outskirts of the solar system, carrying with them that tasty water. But how do we know for sure? I mean, how do you date water? How do you date anyone? Sorry? No, nothing, forget it. Anyway, as it turns out, not all water is created equal. The vast majority of water has hydrogen with just one lonely proton, but every so often, a proton and neutron are found together in an isotope called deuterium, or heavy hydrogen. Almost all that deuterium in existence was created in the Big Bang, and it wasn't evenly distributed throughout the early solar system. When we compare Earth water and comet water, the ratios of deuterium to hydrogen are strikingly close. Now though, the idea that Earth's water was delivered to us via Bucket Brigade is being challenged. Lydia Hallis from the University of Hawaii is the lead author of a study that examined tiny pockets of water trapped in glass that have been sealed deep in the mantle for almost all of Earth's history until when recent volcanic activity brought them to the surface near Canada's Baffin Island. The water was ideal because it had been isolated from surface water and the lighter hydrogen atoms didn't have the chance to escape into space and skew the ratio towards the heavier deuterium. Thanks to recent advances in technology, Hallis was able to examine the trace amounts of water and determine that it was much lighter than ocean water. Her explanation for this is Earth must have had water from the get-go, dissolved into dust when our planet was clumping together. As a cool bonus, if this hypothesis holds water, <sighs> then it's possible that lots of exoplanets or even other planets in our own solar system started with water baked right in. So, does this mean we had enough water for life from the start? Did enough meteorites hit us later to up our deuterium count and bring other useful elements with them? Or is there some other explanation for why Halus's water was so light? We don't know. I think I know what you're going to say next. Do you want to say it? Uh, kind of. No, yeah, go ahead. Okay, sweet. More research is needed. Ah, nailed it. Thanks. We should get that on a t-shirt. Oh, good idea. If water is already present when planets form, then it could be the source of Mars' confirmed liquid water. For the full rundown on how Mars' water runs down the Martian mountains, check out Trace's video right here. In a paper published in Nature Geoscience, researchers announced that the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has found signs that water may flow intermittently on present-day Mars, showing yet again that though science moves slowly, it bends towards the truth. Bet you never thought a question so simple could have so many complex answers, but that sort of thing happens all the time. So if you have any other questions, let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and thanks for watching DNews. See you next time.